The general advice about growing Venus flytraps is to grow them outdoors, where you can have plenty of access to sunlight and to insects. But not everyone has a good outdoor space to grow Venus flytraps. I grow healthy Venus flytraps indoors, and in today's video, I'm, I'm going to teach you exactly how you can do the same. Make sure you pay close attention to each specific care consideration I'm going to cover, and put a special attention to the watering, dormancy, and lighting advice. A bit of a disclaimer before we get started. If you have the possibility of growing Venus flytraps outdoors, please do so. It is a lot easier. But if you have no other choice, and the only option is to grow them in indoors, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. The first item to cover is feeding. Outdoors, Venus flytraps capture their own insects, but indoors, they might have little to no access to any bugs. It is not extremely necessary for Venus flytraps to consume these insects, but I recommend for indoor plants to feed it once a month to provide that extra boost for the plant. You can buy crickets in a pet store and feed your plant once a month for it to be happy. And I have a whole guide about the feeding process too. In regards to watering, this is of crucial importance. First, you must only water your Venus flytrap with pure water sources, such as distilled water, RO water, or rain water. Personally, I just buy the one gallon jugs of distilled water in the grocery store, and those work perfectly. But it is not only about which type of water you use, but it is also about how much water you are providing. For indoor locations, I recommend using the water tray method because it really helps you keep a balance between underwatering and overwatering and staying within the middle where you provide the exact amount that your plant needs. The water tray method is extremely simple. You just place your Venus flytrap pot on top of a tray and then you fill up that tray with water. You add maybe like one inch of two of water and then you leave it there. Your plant will slowly consume that water and once the tray dries up, then you can add more water to the tray. It is important that you wait until the water has completely dried up because indoors, Venus flytraps are more prone to root rot. So uh, with this method, you will ensure that you will never be overwatering your plant. Also related to watering, we have the humidity requirement. Venus flytraps thrive in humid environments, but they not necessarily require them. So do not get overly hung up in the fact that Venus flytraps like humidity. You can maybe buy a humidifier and run it close to your plant, but you do not need to place your plant in a terrarium or in any close enclosure to keep that humidity. Venus flytraps adapt to a wide range of humidity levels. Another important item when growing Venus flytraps is to use carnivorous plant soil. Venus flytraps can't grow in the standard potting media that you find in, in most gardening stores. They require a specific mix of components that do not have any type of minerals or fertilizers. Usually, carnivorous plant soil is made up of peat moss or sphagnum moss mixed with perlite or sand. The perlite or sand element is not, is not necessary but it's often used to provide the additional aeration and drainage that can be extremely important. For indoor plants, I highly recommend either buying a carnivorous plant mix or making one that contains that perlite or that sand that will really help you prevent any type of rotting. In terms of temperature, there are really two things that you have to keep in mind. Try not to expose your green flytrap to extreme temperatures that go beyond 100 Fahrenheit. That should almost never happen in an indoor location, but just keep in mind that placing it in a windowsill with uh, direct sunlight can sometimes end up cooking plants. So just make sure that you monitor the temperature in a specific location before you place your plant there. The second part that you need to take care of is the cold weather. Venus flytraps need cold weather during winter to achieve dormancy. Dormancy is kind of a hibernation period for Venus flytraps. During about three months of the year, they have to go dormant, they kind of die off, and then they reflourish in the spring. And that dormancy, it is necessary. If Venus flytraps don't go dormant, they end up dying. In indoor locations, it's actually not trivial 
to achieve dormancy, since you have to expose your plant to temperatures below 45 or 40 degrees for several weeks and then keep those low temperatures for several months. There are a few strategies for achieving dormancy indoors. For example, you might have an unheated garage or an unheated basement or porch. Maybe you can use one of those locations to place your Venus flytrap. If you do not have any cold indoor location, then you have to go to the last resource, which is placing your Venus flytrap in the fridge this might sound a little bit weird and crazy. It sounded crazy to me the first time that I heard it, but it actually works. And there, obviously there's a whole process about it. So if that's your only option, research a little bit about the refrigerator dormancy for Venus flytraps, and you can go through that process in the winter. Now let's talk about lighting. Lighting is a really big one for Venus flytraps. And indoors, most people struggle to provide adequate lighting. Generally, indoors you have three options. You can provide natural light, artificial light, or a mix of both of them. Natural light is usually only available indoors in a windowsill. If you do place them in a windowsill, make sure that your plant has at least eight hours of direct sunlight. And keep in mind that seasonal changes can often interfere in the amount of light that your plant will get. So maybe you want to add some artificial lighting on top of that natural light that you're getting to make sure that your plant remains healthy. The goal is that you provide over 10 hours of lighting. If you're using artificial lighting, I recommend to set up the settings to run for 12 or 14 hours because artificial lighting is almost never as good as sunlight. It's extremely rare that plants are as, look as good as plants that are growing outdoors. So you might as well just run those bulbs as long as you can. So 12 to 14 hours can make up for the difference in, in intensity and quality that you are getting outside. I'm sharing some links in the description to some specific plant lights that I'm using right now or that I have tried in the past that have worked well for carnivorous plants. Generally, some common choices is using T8 bulbs. A good temperature for these bulbs is 6500K. You have options between LED and fluorescent. It's kind of uh, your choice. I prefer, well, currently I'm using LEDs. If you have found this information useful so far, I'll really appreciate it if you can like this video. It really helps the channel grow and more people to get access to this content. If you have any questions about the process, please feel free to comment. And also if there is any Venus flydrop owners out there that would like to share some of their tips or how do they build their setup indoors, I'd love to hear from you in the comments.